Hey, welcome back. So today I'm going to run through efficient multi-head attention. Um, this allows for increasing the speed of training the transformer. After this, we will be looking at the training loop itself and then testing and deploying the model as well. So I know I said in the when I initially introduced multi-head attention that I wasn't going to do this, but after tinkering around the model, I noticed the performance increases the same, or the performance is the same, but I've noticed a three times uh, training speed increase with the efficient multi-head attention. So uh, I'm going to introduce that to you in this video. How this is going to work is um, I've set the code up so you can just pass in an efficient multi-head attention flag to the transformer constructor and um, this will automatically decide whether to run the efficient variant or the, the unefficient variant, inefficient. So uh, let's jump into the code first and I can just show you how, how it's structured afterwards. So there's a couple of differences. First of all, um, previously, let me bring up the old code as well so we can compare the two. So we had these um, linear Qs, linear Ks, and linear Vs, which we were constructing initially. And these were just a uh, as many layers as we had heads in, uh, in our module. What we're doing here, and note that uh, in the standard multi-head attention, the, the parameters of the model are d model by d, where little d here, this sub dot d, is uh, d model divided by number of heads. Okay, in the efficient multi head attention algorithm, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be initializing each layer, linear q, linear k, and linear v, um, as d model by d model. And then what we'll do is uh, in the code, we'll actually perform a reshape of it. So we take in pre-Q, pre-K, and pre-V, like we did previously, and we project each of the Qs, Ks, and Vs, or the pre-Qs, pre-Ks, and pre-Vs. And then what we do is we perform a reshaping. Okay, so after, after these three projections, what we're working with for, for Q is something which is batch times sequence length times dimensionality. And if we're in the encoder, so if we're calling this module from, from the encoder, the source length is equal to the, or the sequence length is equal to the source sequence length. However, if we're calling in the decoder, the sequence length is the target sequence length. Now, K and V are slightly different. So note that we have three, three multi-head attentions that we actually call in, in the transformer in its entirety. One is in the, uh, in the encoder and two are in the, are in the decoder. So in the encoder, we just have the standard multi-head attention. In the decoder, we have mass multi-head attention and also encoder decoder uh, multi-head attention. Now, in all cases, apart from the mass multi-head uh, attention, um, the, the sequence length of K and V is going to be the source sequence length. So if you remember back to um, the diagram of, of our transformer, I mean, of our decoder, this key and value come from the encoder, so this is source sequence length. Um, in the mass multi-head self-attention, we're actually working with the target sequence length for the um, for for the key and the value and the query. Okay, so now that we have um, obtained our Q, K, and V projections, what we're going to do is we're going to reshape the the um, the outputs, and we're going to reshape them to be batch size times uh, the number of heads times minus one, and I'll explain what that is in a second, and self.d, where self.d is obviously the model dimensionality divided by the number of heads. So if we had, if our d was 512, for example, and our number of heads was 64, then uh, our number of heads was eight, um, so this would be eight, then our self.d would be 512 divided by 64, which is eight. 512 divided by eight, which is 64, apologies. Now, minus one basically means whatever's left over, fill that remaining shape. And this is just, we've just put this here as a, as a convenience, so we don't need to work out the, the sequence length in itself. Um, I mean, if we wanted to do so, we would just say uh, q sequence equals pre q dot shape one, and then just feed in sequence in here. But the uh, minus one just means, okay, fill this in with whatever else is remaining. So we've reshaped q, k, and v to, to be this four dimensional tensor. And then we feed this into the scale dot product attention. Okay, so before I go in here, I'm just going to cover the, the masking aspect of this because um, instead of working with uh, rank three tensors for the masking, we're now going to be working with rank four tensors. 
So previously, um, in our standard multi-head attention, we were working uh, for the source mask. We had this, if source is not equal to uh, source pad index, um, let's create the source mask and then unsqueeze that to, to be the right shape. And we were using broadcasting to ensure that we weren't ensuring anything, but when the, when the mask was actually used, it would be broadcast along the dimension, which was just one. So we don't need to keep on recreating uh, we don't need to feed the batch size into into the source mask or the sequence length rather. Uh, with the efficient multi-head attention, um, we basically have to add another dimension or take care of the other dimension. For the source mask, that's pretty trivial. Um, for the target mask is um, where we just have to perform something very slightly extra. And that's instead of having something as, um, so this is what we had previously, one times se target sequence length times target sequence length. What we have here is one, and obviously this is going to be broadcast, one times the number of heads that we have, so eight, for example, times target sequence length times target sequence length. So that means when we go into the masking, um, we're now going to be masking over a rank four tensor instead of a rank three tensor. If you remember previously, we were actually doing a loop over each one of the, um, because this was a list over each one of the Qs, Ks, and Vs, we were looping over it, so we were feeding in a rank three tensor to this um, to this function. Now, instead, we're feeding in a whole rank four tensor. Okay, so um, the shape of the tensor is going to be batch times number of heads times Q length, and we just covered here what would be Q length and what would be K and V length uh, times little d or d divided by number of heads. Now, this is really the only change that we have in this function here. Um, so previously we had, uh, we were doing a permutation, right? So uh, remember the, the formula was QK transpose or Q dot K transpose. So this was us transposing K um, where we would switch over the first and second axes. Now we have something which is um, batch times number of heads times one or CLN one times little d and we want to multiply this with batch times number of head times sequence set two times little d. So um, the way that the matmol function works is it will always look at the last two dimensions of the tensor. So what we have to do is switch the last two dimensions over. So what we're saying here is um, this reshaped k is going to be batch times num heads times, oops, little d times the length. Okay, and then we obviously have this and this um, is what the multiplication would be or the matrix multiplication would be applied over. So what we have afterwards is something which is batch times number of heads times q len times kb len, which is right here. Okay, apart from that, the rest of the code basically stays the same. Um, and after we jump out of this function, um, we have this shape that I just uh, read out. So, uh, sorry, after we finish the function, we have something which is batch times number of heads times QLEN times uh, little d. And what we want to do is basically just reshape this back into a rank three tensor. So we just collapse the number of heads and the, the length together. And we specify that we want things back into uh, model dimensionality. And then we just feed that through a linear layer. Okay, cool. So regarding how this is plugged into the code, um, so as I said here, we have the, the flag in the transformer constructor, and we're going to be feeding this flag into the encoder and the decoder. So in the encoder layer, or in the constructor here, we, we take it in, and in the encoder layer, we feed it in as well. So we'll jump in there, and basically what we're saying, if it's uh, efficient multi-head attention, then we'll run the uh, efficient variant, otherwise we'll just run the standard variant. So from our main loop, which we'll be looking at in the next lesson, or our main uh, main file, um, which we'll be looking at in the next lesson, you'll see us just feeding in, uh, or you can just change efficient multi-head attention there, and you'll see an increase in the speed of training. Uh, we do the same for the decoder, so let me just run, run you through that for completeness. So decoder, efficient MHA, and then decoder layer, and then we do the same thing again. So all the parameters are basically the same that we that we feed into into the function, um, and that's it. That's how you implement efficient multi-head attention. Cool. 
See you guys tomorrow for actually training our Transformer. Bye.